Welcome to Inner Beat Yoga, and I'm your teacher, Joe, also known as Facilitator. This is a simple and easy, enjoyable approach to yoga. Carve your own path, find your own way, activate some freedom in your life. When do you get to move how you want to move? Certainly not when you're in your car or at a board meeting or um, at some function for your children, any or all of the above. So as you can see, these are my um, decisions that I'm making. I'm determining this is what I need. I'm gonna share with you as usual, as I do with all my other classes, where that compass is for me and hopefully encourage you to get moving with me too. This class is geared toward the heart. I am rooting my feet down and moving naturally. Move naturally with me. Oh, that means allowing your body to speak volumes by giving up some control because as we know, control is really just a perception in the mind um, that we've conceived with the hope of being able to determine outcomes when really what we want is to be able to control um, our own lives upon ourselves. And the way that we can really start to gain that sense of control is if we loosen the grip on the lead or the leash in our minds between our willpower and the desire to have total control. We need to let ourselves roam a bit, kind of sow our wild oats mentally in order to get to know ourselves. Otherwise, we're constantly silencing ourselves and our impulses, then we'll just hide from ourselves all the time. So, TCY, as you can see, this movement is nothing extraordinary yet, nothing you uh, might see every day in a yoga um, class, if you will, yoga group. So, if you're here, you are taking this class for free, or maybe you're one of my trainees. Thank you for joining the 30 hour and the 200 hour at interviewyoga.com. For the duration of this um, facilitation, I'm speaking with you about my determinations moving forward. So here I'm sensing into my body to see why cornerstone. What do I need here? So whereas arms are usually traditionally out to a T, the same line as the shoulders, palms down, maybe you might determine that you need to explore what it's like to have your palms turning up. Or maybe you need to have them down right now. So determining our needs, meeting our needs, and then finding a way to self-soothe after we've met that need because Ironically, it's such a change for us to start to listen and actually meet the demands of our bodies as we have them. Yet, what we really want and need, like I just spoke about to start, is learning how to cordially listen to ourselves, trusting, prioritizing. So here, there's no rush, nor rhyme or reason. I'm rolling circles with my elbows. And maybe my chin or your chin, if you are practicing a similar movement to this one, remember always working within what you know and what you sense very carefully that you are able to do. 
So these circles just got bigger and bigger. And as you might imagine, I was feeling those, and if you're still doing them, all throughout the entire torso and obliques, shoulders, neck. So I am demoing this wide leg stretch from the side now. And to, or in order to really expand, um, unstick my heart, if you will, I want to mirror this openness throughout my entire bodily tissue. So throughout my entire body. And go at your own pace, go at your own flow. Really, allow yourself to have some fun. Responsible fun, but fun nonetheless. So what sense are you most drawn to right now? Feeling the hands touching the floor or the feet touching the floor or maybe only one of those is touching the floor right now with where your body has led you. And remember it is sort of like that adage you need to know them, like them, trust them. When it comes to the relationship with our body, if you don't like the idea of doing something, meaning you're super adverse to it for whatever reason, super adverse, then don't. Wait. Find why. Explore self-inquiry. Why? Is this something that I'm feeling opposed to? And even though our body doesn't um, have a voice, really, uh, independent from the one that is connected to our thinking mind, our brains, which is essentially really is our body. So if we can have the consciousness, the presence of mind, to ask our body what it needs, our body will tell us. Because as we just discovered, our bodies are totally attached to our voice. Therefore, our bodies do have a voice. <laughs> so this is my body saying, hey, I'm sitting here, I'm stretching out the arches in my feet. I'm putting the tips of my fingers on the ground and I'm starting to do that cat cow. And you know what? It felt and feels great. So I'm tapping out the tops of my legs there from knee to toes to the shin. And that helps to just free up any tension from sitting on the feet for too long. And now I've threaded my left arm through my right arm extended. This, I can really feel all along the shoulder joint on the left side and the muscles in the chest surrounding the heart. So this really, to me, feels like a squeezing out of tension in the heart itself. And now, because I actually really enjoy this, and I'm determining to do this on the other side immediately. That's what I'm doing. If you know, like, and trust to do something different, then let it happen for you on your map. The exploration of cat and cow is evolving as I allow circular motions to range from navel downward there. And now I am turning to face you. And I'm taking one arm on top of the other one. And I'm looking to again remove any 
of the unnecessary kind of tension that evolves in all of our bodies from having negative stress. Remember, there's stress that is quote unquote positive and quote unquote negative. And really the difference is, is how much do we look forward to engaging the stress of our lives? So when we feel it, are we able to turn inward, assess needs, and take action, take initiative by both self-soothing and exploring newness, new range of possibility, new range of engagement with ourselves, no matter how that looks. Notice the thumb circles that are taking place now with what appears to be my right hand on my left shoulder where it plugs into my chest, the rotator cuff. Now opposite side, crossing my opposite arm on top of my other arm at about shoulder height. Maybe you explore the elbows further down. I find in my body when I go too far up, it can pinch, feels like a pinch, so that's um, a non-interest to me. However, there is this variation where if I allow my chest, my sternum, and my chin and my low back to lead, there becomes a rhythmic opening throughout the entire body the front body, the back body is working right now. And that's something that you may or may not want to explore today or another day. If you're looking at the screen at me, you might notice that I've extended my left leg straight out. The heel of my left leg is out from my right leg there so it's going to appear the opposite um, so for ease you just saw my right leg out my left knee simply stayed bent there it is again my right leg foot I guided it up you might want to support the guiding to that initial position with your hand on the heel of your foot guiding the foot forward and then maybe lengthening it out or perhaps you are positively stuck on something completely different that you might have seen previously in my own flow here or you have found something that you like you know well enough and you trust the name of the game here so my focus is opening the heart so you just saw the arms expand for a moment and that was enough for me in the rhythm of my own needs in my body in that moment you might instead of self-soothing like i am right now with palm drags slides down the legs connecting with this vehicle that brings us through life you might be doing another round of leg extensions. As you can see, I'm slowly deciding and demoing to you, bringing up what appears to be my, so my left foot up, sliding it out. I'm noticing my groin opening the groin and the heart are connected to the heart is such a center fuse for everything else in our bodies and our lives you see how i'm exploring with my arms forward and then i'm opting for some self-soothing with hand drags along the inside of the leg and the knee joint 
I'm really pressing through that extended leg there that you can see on your left side. Wherever you are, keep breathing. As you can see, I'm taking my thumb of my left hand there and placing it into that socket, that area where my arm connects into my chest. This is a freedom point. We can sometimes free ourselves of unnecessary tension there about our bodily resistances toward giving and extending, reaching outward or receiving in this case. Now we're on your left side, which is the heart side. And you just saw my tongue muscle extend toward my chin, which helps to, in the yogic belief, cleanse the blood of impurities. So in that vein, no pun intended, I lifted my arms up. I was rotating my hands in my uh, wrist there. And now I've determined that after being in that position with my legs that I previously was in, I'm ready to extend outward. So all classes are balanced between going inward and extending outward. Obviously, I have two types of classes and I just gave away their names that you can take virtually with me one-on-one. -on -one or you can invite a friend um, or your whole family. <laughs> so I'm demoing from the side here and hopefully you're still enjoying the ocean sounds. And I'm supporting my back muscles and my chest opening. And I'm taking peace fingers to my big toe on my left side as I reach my right arm over. So you might be somewhere totally different, some ground I've covered or some ground you need to cover. And that is wonderful, fantastic. Soothing ourselves with our own self-acceptance of what we need. And I say we because we're in this together. However, in the confines of our mat, our yoga mat, we're talking about you. We're talking about that inner relationship of asking and listening. I'm self-soothing here. I hike a lot. So for me, there's days where I need a lot more of it. And there's no shame in that because I'm still putting in the work. First and foremost, I'm listening. What about you right now? What do you need right now? How might you self-soothe and or take initiative? You might need to take a new path in your expression, in your body. It might be something that you don't see me doing. 
if your body is saying, I might really, really like that, then really, really, really listen. Repetition can be very soothing, so I've revisited this position and I've stayed here. Right now, having that hand on the back of my head, you might want to stay there longer and see what that feels like. It really relieved and anchored a sense of connection from tail to the top of my head. Connection is healing, whether it's a newly formed one inside of ourselves and or with someone else. So I'm centering myself in the middle of what I've designed to be my mat. And I am shaking out my legs. Uh, you might pull your toes back to flex your feet, or you might stay with your legs just without any tension in them produced by effort. So I'm simply turning, turning around so that I may do the other side, facing a new direction changing my perspective. This is that sternum point. So I am taking one hand and I'm simply pressing, self-soothing, essentially. Now on this side, I'm talking less because I've already guided you through quite a lot and we're going to mirror what we practiced on the other side, on this side. His fingers connecting in our own time. It might not be today. It might be some other way that you end up here after a different flow. Right now, I'm really focusing on having a dual experience here. So, whereas, yes, you just saw me really open with my top arm up, you also just saw me rounding, bringing my left shoulder down so that my left shoulder is on the same plane or closer to the same plane as my right shoulder that's attached to my arm that is elongated over my right leg with my fingers around the toe or the foot. Sometimes it feels awesome to just have the hand holding on to all the toes or the foot, the pad of the foot. So stagnancy is something that removes us from ourselves. So explore.
you might stay there longer in any variation that you're practicing. Determining your needs. It might look totally, totally different, totally different posture than the person next to you. It's your body and bodies are meant to take on new forms. It's nature. It happens. So let's participate in that form changing, that form shifting. It happens naturally throughout our lives. So that we get a sense of self and connection to that self. So I'm choosing to take a close hand to self-soothe and tap that center of the sternum that helps to relieve any sensations that might be inhibiting me from being fully present with creating a new connection to my body right now, one that is of presence making. needs and nurturing because let's face it we live lives where that's not possible to do every minute of the day but or and it is absolutely essential that we make time for it at some point of the day even for five minutes every hour or five minutes, beginning of the day, middle of the day, end of the day. Tapping into our own energy. I want to reframe that as well to something concrete because we can't oftentimes see what we connect with the word energy, even though we can see it. <laughs> We're all made up of these atoms full of energy. So another way to think of it is that we really benefit from taking time to experience ourselves outside of our roles that we play professionally and personally. We need to know how everything's feeling and functioning before things get out of hand. So this is the best preventative self-care that we can do. This slowing down self-inquiry that leads to self-determination on the mat that we do in TCY and that we learn about in our 30 hour and 200 hour yoga teacher trainings for both uncertified and already certified yoga teacher and facilitators. If you're watching me, you might be able to see that the wave just got bigger in throughout the spine started with flattening my low back and lifting the buttocks up and then placing the buttocks back down and allowing that natural arch to occur in the low back and then repeating that several times before starting to slowly increase the amount of lift off from the pelvis. The length of time here is going to vary as always. You might need to shift out later or before I do in my own practice. Remember, if you like it, you know it, feels good, trust it, stay with it. This movement for me is meeting my need to 
gain a sense of expansion while being supported. So the floor, I feel that support and I feel my core, my navel drawing to my spine as added in anchoring, connection and support. All within the body, we have all these experiences within the human body. And we need to be able to feel these things within ourselves before we can ever imagine feeling them anywhere else or with anyone else. The TCY map practice with myself and inner beat yoga is the stomping grounds, if you will, to start to facilitate these inner sensations within yourself on your own time, with your own evolution, by sensing your own needs. This is my own resting point. I'm hovering my arms ever so slightly off of the ground. And I can feel the fabric of my body, also known as the tissues. So we have a big sheet of tissues entwining our whole body from head to toe. And this feels delicious for me Whereas that's true for you, it might land differently. So we, in TCY, we want to move slowly to discover our answers so that the transition between where we think we want to go, where we like to go, where we know we want to go, and between where we actually need to go are safe and secure and supportive of what we really need. Transitions are essential time to support new discoveries about ourselves, our direction, what we're capable of. So these rock outs here that you can see if you're watching me, if you're not watching me, that's also equally as awesome. Anyway, they really support getting into the nooks and crannies of the body that we think are just quote unquote how they are, they'll always be that way. Whereas the gentle rockouts help to dislodge the old stuff from the tissues in the body. Now you're starting to see the rock outs getting bigger and that's by my own determination of my own needs and my own experiences, what I like, what I know, what I trust. Here we can build trust, although we still need to move incrementally slowly inching toward new discoveries. Sometimes watching first, becoming accustomed by observing can be a great way to learn. One universal truth in that position, if you're still rocking out, is always looking at our navel, always keeping the back of our neck elongated. So if we're looking at our navel point and our stomach, Naturally, the back of the neck is going to be elongated to protect 
that sensing part of the brain that is the brain stem. <sighs> I'm squeezing my legs, my shins in. Natural breathing. No forcing of my breath. I'm supporting my breath to lengthen and elongate. And that means moving in a range that is most true to my body. So my body accommodates that natural breath by staying within a range that allows me to grow and expand while anchoring in a supportiveness for myself and where I'm at. Here I'm placing my hand to my low back. That oceanic sound we hear is literally a reminder that every time we invert our bodies as we were just doing or i was just doing and you were just observing and might do in the future to some degree whether it's placing pillows and blankets underneath your hips and staying there for a minute up to 10 minutes if you like is that is a reminder of how our brain is being rejuvenated with the cerebral spinal fluid helping to highlight the brain centers bathe the brain creating more flexibility and nourishment of our spinal cord in our brains long term Now I'm getting ready to practice what is called fish posture. So I'm taking my hands into what forms a triangle shape, thumbs together, pointer fingers angled toward one another. And I've slid that underneath my low back at my sacrum. And I'm wiggling around a bit, finding what's comfortable so that I'm rooted in that sense of self-security. I know I have a place I can go to. I can return here to my original place on my back there whenever I want. So this is something you might want to take into consideration. And then I have lifted up from that breastbone, from that sternum. My intention is only to stay here for a moment several breaths and then slowly low belly breathing and naturally breathing in the low belly just like i did when i was a wee one a little one before my thought and tensions life tensions entered the body remember we can create healthy tension and that healthy tension is my intention to draw my elbows that are planted firmly on the floor toward one another and pressing them into the floor while drawing them toward one another. Legs pressing toward one another. That's another option that you can determine what works best for you and your body. To what level does one need to accentuate that squeezing of the legs or that sense of suppleness and softening throughout the legs. As you might be able to see, I am, I've moved on. I'm doing big arm circles. My head is for the most part resting on the floor. 
my low back is just ever so slightly elevated off of the floor. And my heels might be forward from my knees as they were, or they might be completely off the ground. In your own body, there's ways to determine what you need, and that number one way is to sense, first and foremost, sense what is happening in your body, what is transpiring in your own body. The idea here is to get super comfortable or at least be on a road toward becoming super comfortable. When we sense, we can sense what's possible. And we can also sense how readily available that possibility is. That we're capable of going that far, wherever that is, or for that long. Yet, in present moment time, we modulate how long or how much we give ourselves to something because we can sense when it's serving and also when there might be a negative ramification. So only we can really determine how long we need to be in a posture on the yoga mat or wherever you are. For me, I'm here, I'm dedicated to staying in this final resting posture. Wherever you are, sense that balance, sense it within yourself, inquire. If you determine something, ask, how do you know that? Find what supports that statement within your body. Thank you again for being here. Innerbeyoga.com, 20 hour, 300, uh, excuse me, 30 hour, 200 hour trainings at the website. And there's just endless possibility and discovery when we do listen inwardly. This is the moment where you can see someone who's graduated the program and our offerings and again, the website. Aloha.